Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Adam Scott, a two-time Emmy Award nominee who plays Henry Pollard on the Stars comedy series Party Down, which just returned for its long-awaited third season and finished uh, earlier this year. It was It's so good. It was so much fun. Uh, Adam, Adam, it's 13 years, I guess, since the show went off the air to this comeback revival season. I know there had been talks frequently about like maybe a movie or coming back for a third season and this and that. But when it, so when it was finally done and you're back and on the set, like, what was it like actually like that first day after all this time away from the show to actually be on the set doing it? Yeah, it was weird. I mean, it's almost cliched at this point because there's so many reboots and stuff of people saying how surreal it is, but it really is when you're there um, in the wardrobe with your old friends that you used to do the show with. And this had been a significant amount of time. It had been 13 years. Um, you know, it was, it's so funny because it had been a lot of work getting to the point of, you know, being on the set. Um, and then we had some COVID scares. So we, and the whole thing almost got scrapped. Like if one more person got COVID, we just were out of time and we would have had to just walk away. Um, so it was a huge relief that we were there. But all of that, have uh, that, that entire run up uh, to it actually happening. When I stepped onto the set, I realized I hadn't really considered how this was going to feel because we'd been so busy getting it ready. Um, so when I when I actually walked on the set and it was a scene with Ken Marino in front of the party down van, um, I, I I kind of was a little overwhelmed. It was very moving. Um, but it was also just strange. It was just strange uh, because it felt like zero time had passed. And it's been a long time. Uh, and our, all of our lives were so different back then. Um, I had two babies and now I have two teenagers. It's just a completely different world. Um, and then looking over and seeing Ken play Ron Donald again, which is Ken, I think is the funniest person in the world. And that is my favorite character. Um, so it's hard to uh, distill it down to one feeling. It was a lot of feelings, um, all of them good. Some of them confusing, but all, all of this like pure joy in you know a bunch of different compartments. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like, I think for, I guess, as a viewer, it was like, again, like I watched the show 13 years ago and then watching now, it's like, oh, yeah. it felt like you're right. Like no, nothing really, no time had passed, but so much time had passed. Yeah. And it like, it really does kind of pick right up, right? Like it's like very much, you're just like right back into it when you're watching, which I thought was really great. Yeah. That's one of the things I love. Um, and it's all credit to to John Enbaum is, is making sure the show still felt like the same scrappy little show um you know he could have made it look kind of glossy and 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 nice it could have made it look uh, just better but it still feels like that same little down and dirty show um and this time we had five days to shoot instead of four and other luxuries that we didn't have 13 years ago but the look and feel of the show is the same uh i think john's idea was to make it feel as if party down's been going this entire time. We just haven't, haven't seen the intervening seasons and we're picking up on party down season 13. We just skipped all those other seasons. So it just kind of felt like we were just putting the needle back down uh, on the record. That's really, that's great. And it's also like, I guess I was thinking this too, because we've seen, like you said before, like there's been a lot of revivals, certainly of like comedies or just in, in general, like that's obviously like a yeah. very popular thing and people love seeing stuff they used to love come back and like this and that. Yeah. And I always feel like with comedies, you risk, you run the risk of it like being like not as good as people remember, right? Like the fans or whoever yeah. is like in their heads, they have like an idea of what they liked about whatever show it is. And then when they get to see the yeah. revival, it's like, oh, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. But like you said, like this, it does feel like you're able to maintain the expectations of the people who really loved it, but also like subvert, I guess, or maybe it's not like, I don't know. I just found that like really well done in that aspect of it. It sounds like you guys actually probably did consider that greatly, I guess, how people would, you know, with the property that people are so attached to, or like has such a cult cult fan base. I don't even know what you would call it, right? Like people really love it. The people who love it. 
Um, I guess, yeah, that's interesting that you guys like probably did think about that a lot, I guess. For sure. I mean, like with, you know, a sequel or something, you the last thing you want to do is come back and screw it up. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely something and a, 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 an added pressure to the entire uh, to the entire thing. And and, um, you know, a lot of that was just on John Enbaum's shoulders, uh, our, you know, showrunner. And, uh, and, you know, he really stuck the landing and, and made sure that the stories that uh, we were telling for all the characters were vital and funny and interesting. And, and all every, every one of these characters had a, uh, a somewhere real to go um, and keeping the, the comedy ball up in the air um, at all times as well. It was, yeah. it was hard, but he, I think he did an incredible job. Yeah, it's it's great. Like, I mean, not just because I was like, it's a very, it was very funny. I would say the first episode, uh, yeah, when you like the twist that it's in in the dawn of COVID, basically, I was like, that was like one of the funniest. Uh, I was like legit yeah. laugh out loud. Like that was such a great button on that episode, and I just was like, oh man, yeah. the show is really on point. It's just is like so so funny. You know, there was one joke that we came up with because in January of 21, when we first started really kind of saying, okay, let's do this. Um, the five executive producers, uh, John Enbaum, Dan Etheridge, Rob Thomas, Paul Rudd, and myself started doing these weekly Zooms um, and where we would just get on and just chat for a couple of hours. And we did it uh, every weekend for like, four or five weeks, right? We just had like a few of these things. And then John just took all of this raw information and party ideas, character arc ideas, all this stuff and went away and used some of it, came up with tons of new, you know, just kind of crafted a season out of this, this giant uh, pile of, of raw info. Um, but during those, those Zooms, we came up with this one joke that I really love, but it was just too stupid to use. Um, which was during COVID, Ron started a food truck. Remember Super Crackers, his old mm -hmm. yes. franchise idea? This one was a, a food truck that served soup and open-faced sandwiches, but he called the open-faced sandwiches spreaders. And so his food truck was called Super Spreaders. <laughs> And he couldn't get anyone during COVID to eat his uh, soup and open face sandwiches. Uh, it just was too too dumb, but we we all couldn't uh, couldn't drop it for a while. It's super spreaders is great, uh, great for maybe, maybe for season four, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. You mentioned like earlier about how like thirteen, like how much time had passed in your own lives, right? Like you like for, in your personal lives and stuff. Yeah. I guess, and for you as an, I mean, I like. Again, not because we're just chatting. Like I always thought you've always been a really good actor, I think, but you've had 13 years basically since you played Henry, right? And I guess like, yeah. you've obviously probably, I mean, you know, you had an Emmy nomination for Severance, you're doing all this great work. So like having evolved as an actor and then going back to play Henry, I guess, how did that, how did your, like, I'm, I'll, how did your improvements as a performer, let's say, or whatever, like, how did you, like, how did that affect how you played him now, if at all, I guess? Yeah, it, it was interesting because when we made the original show, I connected very just directly with the character in a lot of ways, because at that point I was, you know, 15 or so years in uh, to an acting career where I hadn't really found traction in, in a lot of ways. And, um, and Party Down ended up being part of what got me traction uh funny enough but so there was this re really just mainline connection to the character and i think for all everyone in the cast we all had this connection to the predicament all these characters were and it's part of what bonded us to the show and to each other so intensely back then is that this show about this specific thing made us feel better about that specific thing and it was really good and super funny and so fun. We just never wanted to stop making it. So, but, you know, coming back to the character, um, 
you know, like you always feel like a kid when you're around your parents as an actor, no matter what success you may find, you're always going to feel like that out of work actor who can't, you know, get arrested. It's just always there. So that feeling that I kind of equate with Henry um, is easy to find. But the, the, the cool thing is, is that it's been 13 years and John wrote the character having been around for a bit, had some blood under the bridge and is a different, has changed a bit and has a macro view of his life um, and has moved on from a lot of the things that were causing him so much angst and pain back then. Um, some of those wounds get reopened over the season, but um, the character is, it's the same guy, but there's, um, there's a difference to him. He's settled and he's kind of put a couple of fires out um, when we find him. Yeah. Uh, so it was fun to, to find the, the original um, kind of pathos of the character, but then kind of find a, a new color. Yeah, and I mean, I think it end like the way kind of the arc of the season for for Henry, it does feel like an acceptance that he's like, and not to sound like Stewart, it's like an acceptance that he's good enough, basically, right? Like he kind of like realizes like his yeah, like he is actually you know like these are things that are value. There is value to like what he's doing. Like he doesn't need to be in That's like right. a superhero movie or whatever. Like an a Marvel right. analog isn't the thing. It's really I found it like really That's helpful, right. honestly, like in a great way, and not like not like cheesy hopeful, like just legitimately like good. Like it was like, oh, this is nice. Like I found that really a compelling arc to play for you. Me too. And, and I, and I, I like that, uh, you know, because it's, uh, it's the choices go to Tunisia with Jennifer Garner and have a role in, you know, a giant Marvel type movie uh, or continue your job at the public school and catering. Um and he chooses continuing his job at the public school and catering because it makes him feel good and because he is doing something um, that matters to these kids and he doesn't want to let them down. And that's not a decision he would have made 13 years ago mm -hmm. or five years ago. It's a decision he's making now because of what he's learned along the way. Yeah, it's really, it was really good. And it's also like, I mean, as a viewer, it was like a pleasant surprise, right? Because I think we've been conditioned to like, see yeah. like, oh, like it's kind of like Sisyphusian or whatever, but like, oh, like deciding actually yeah. this is like really cool. It was like, oh, that's like a good twist for me as a viewer. Uh, you mentioned Jennifer Garner oh. and uh, she's so great. You've worked with so many uh, incredible like actresses and like done a lot with, uh, you know, like I was rewatching Big Little Lies recently or with like Reese Witherspoon, it's so good and everything. And like, so what kind of like, I guess, yeah. what did Jennifer bring uh to the role that i guess you were surprised by or getting to work with her in this capacity like what was like you know i mean it's a great you guys have great chemistry you have great chemistry with a lot of people but how did this maybe differ for you or any in any way well thanks um yeah she's the best she is so great and so funny um we you know were figuring out the that role of evie and kind of had Jennifer Garner as a, uh, a the type of um, actor that would be perfect for Evie. Like if we could find someone with that much sort of um, the, the smarts and the energy and just everything that Jennifer Garner brings uh, to the screen, uh, all of the enviable things that she's able to do. Um, and it wasn't until we were a few weeks in of trying to figure out who exactly could play this role that someone suggested, why don't we just try, I think maybe Rob, why don't we just try getting Jennifer Garner? And we had just, it hadn't occurred to us that maybe we try and uh, because it seemed silly to even try. And then we did, and turns out she is a, uh, a fan, her kids like it. And so we were just so lucky and couldn't believe it that she was going to do it. Um, and, uh, and she's, the best. She's so great. And it was so fun. Um, I would love to work with Jennifer again, anytime, uh, and jump at the chance. So we were extremely lucky. Yeah. It, it's great. She, she, and she, as far she, as what she brought, she brought everything. 
yeah <laughs> to the role you know <laughs> that's good and then and then the other big relationship for henry obviously is is casey and you know lizzie kaplan uh did could not do it which i, I know that you guys have talked about like because uh, she was so busy with uh fatal attraction and fleischman's in trouble and even getting her was like a coup basically i guess you know it's a very quick scene at the end like was it again similar like you were saying before like you just kind of step back in and you're right back into it where you are because again you and her have a great chemistry as well albeit different from like the chem- kind of chemistry i think you have with jennifer like we were just talking about but i mean like was that like just great to have her back even for such a short amount of time basically oh yeah it was it was so much fun i mean we had one day with her in new york it was this top secret trip uh to new york to to shoot the scene and and um and yeah it was a blast i mean you know i think uh for henry there's really just one person um whether he's able to face up to it or not or admit it to himself or not i think that casey is the love of his life and um and uh they didn't even have a real relationship really it was sort of like this weird thing but um so i think seeing her you know the season ends but i would imagine that you know that encounter is the sort of thing that changes a person's thinking i i would i think right uh and uh so I hope we get to see where it goes next. Yeah, I was going to say, you spent all this, like, 13 years, basically, I'm sure, being asked about a season three of Party Down, or like we said, like, there was a movie, potentially, like, a million years ago. Yeah. Like, so now are you ready to hear, ask, get asked about season four of Party Down a million times between the next, t- until you get to do it again, I guess? I know. We certainly, like, left it hanging, you know? Um, so I, I hope so. I hope. I hope uh, we get to, and I hope we can find another six weeks where everyone's available because that ended up being the feat of engineering was, was being able to schedule it. But um, I think we can, I think we can do it. I, I would love to, I know everybody wants to, wants to do it. Yeah. I mean, as a viewer, I would also love it because it was just so, it was, this season was so satisfying and really great. And like you said, like getting the, everyone, it's, it, I guess it's a, a good problem to have when everybody on the show is so uh, seemingly very successful and very funny and like, just kind of like always busy. So hopefully there is a time uh, again when you guys can get together because it was, yeah. it was great. Yeah. Uh, Adam Scott, we have to go, but thank you so much. Adam Scott stars on party down. You can watch all the episodes on stars. Thank you, Adam, for this. Appreciate it. Thanks Christopher. Thanks Christopher.